All right, welcome back. Now, time for us to talk about something very, very important for inside society, talking about architects, talking about buildings for inside Obodo, Nigeria, and talking about the flooding issue where we the experience for inside Nigeria. People, they come outside, blame even our own activities. Others, they come outside, blame the structure. Um, but to talk more concerning this, how we go understand how um, our buildings and how some of the architectural structure, say they affect flooding, if at all it day, uh, we get two Kajat people, which will join, which does join us in the house. We get um, architect um, Ekaite Fuja, Shina, the secretary of the Architect Association of Nigeria. Thank you very much. So you come inside the house. Thank you. And we also get architect Tayo Babalaki, in the past president of the Architect Association of Nigeria, also the vice president of African Union of Architects, the CHEMO Organizing Committee. Good to have you in the house. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me. Now, looking at um, certain stories we don't get now, in the past um, less than 24 hours, we hear say flood don't suck about 40 villages for inside Adamawa. We also hear say flood don't destroy Nigerian prison and about 228 inmates will actually escape. We also hear say flood don't suck Badagri communities. So for inside Nigeria alone, um, flood don't cause a lot of damage for inside the country. And people, they come outside, they ask questions in terms of this flood, in terms of um, um, the way or waiting with you to do. This water where they talk of where they cause this kind of badness where they make certain buildings even collapse. Because some houses, they way if you walk out, go, you go see a map of water for the walls. Some places, they way you go, you go see and see, go down, they see cracks for certain buildings. This flood, what would they get? Is there any direct relationship um, or direct effect we fit to get on top of the way buildings are made or structured? Might start with um, architect um, Tayo, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, flood, flooding is as a result of um, the global warming that has taking effect and obviously in our country in Nigeria we have a lot of high population and as well as the fact that our infrastructural um, uh, developments have not met up with the aspirations of um, the development that we require to be able to meet up with the flooding. A lot of the flooding is caused by the fact that the water levels have risen over time the rains for this year, for example, has come, but the infrastructure, like the drainage that we have to be able to meet up and drain all this, we don't really have it. Most of the time, our infrastructures are built after the buildings have been erected. It's supposed to be the other way around. The infrastructure is supposed to be in place that will have adequate drainage and we'll be able to um, guide against the flooding that will, that will happen. And then secondly, as you have said, in Lagos State, a lot of people are building over the uh, flood, mm -hmm. flood uh, yeah. areas and all that, and even build areas they are now supposed to build. So that, in effect, has much. So drainages have been blocked. Some houses that were built three years, four years ago did not have flood. And someone behind them sold down the land, and then you are not able to have your water, and then there's flooding. So and flooding is very, very dangerous because it's a big pressure of um, volume of water that comes at the same time affects the building structure and the, you lead to collapse. And most of the time our building structures, there are very few that are built by professionals, unfortunately. Exactly. That one leads <laughs> to my next question, really, exactly. because in some developed countries where they actually experience flooding now, you yeah. see a lot of people looking for ways on how to protect the house and even protect people inside the house, yeah. even when flooding um, right. actually happened. But yeah. we see, and for Nigeria, the case is totally different right. due yeah. to the standard of materials where they use. Yes. So who, who would you actually blame in this case? Mainly, to me, it's... All of us are involved and, you know, typically government is number one because of the fact that they are supposed to have regulations that support, that make sure that you build correctly an infrastructure and to an extent they are supposed to be the police to ensure that people build rightly. And that all those enforcement that are required for you to build correctly are not being taken care of. So that's lead to a lot of effect. But our people themselves, to buying land and plots in area of flooding, has, I mean, they contribute to it as well. And even in situations whereby they give them warning that, hey, please leave this area, you still find some people will hang in there thinking nothing will happen. And I remember the Meteorological Association had announced that the water table this year was going to be high, and everybody waiting for the flooding area should clear 
should clear off because the water table is going to be high this year and they should clear up. I'm sure not all of them clear up and this has led to so many things. But now, they, they, now you talk say clear off. If they're supposed to clear, that means they're supposed to come up for that area. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. come up to where? Because now one thing for, for the meteorological group to come outside talk this kind of thing, another thing to gov for government to take action. Mm -hmm. Because if they say make them move, they don't get problem to move. I should say if you tell me now, say make I come up for that place because of water, I go one come out, but I go think and say where are they come out they go? Yeah. Who will go give me money if I want to go stay for a hotel? Who will go give me another accommodation? We go fee cater, we go fee stay, yeah. we are go fee stay for the next one or two months. So in this kind of situation now, they are all they are more or less in a fix. They go just sit down and say, ah. Make we see now, the, any day when the flood come, we go start to go take manager. Yeah. And that has been the mindset and scenario for a lot of people waiting for inside that kind of situation. So that's the difference we have from us here. In international countries, they would have set up a rescue um, yeah. accommodation area for these people so that they can move them at that particular time and make sure they take care of them for the next maybe six to one year to relocate them. Because that's what it's all about. Because the water table has increased and the flooding is coming. And the climate change is something that is reality. And it's and not just part, not, not only Nigeria, they actually suffer. No, I mean, exactly, a lot of countries. A lot of but countries. I want to speak with you, architect Ekaite. Now, <clears throat> people, they come outside, talk about the number of quack architects where we get out there. Say so that they actually contribute to some of those um, unqualified building where we they get. Do you think we have enough qualified architects? Well, um, the number of qualified architects is a challenge. You know, right now that we, we are still under 5,000 in number. And this 5,000... For the whole of Nigeria. Yes, mm. for the whole of Nigeria. And this 5,000 also includes people who are, have passed on. Wow. Yes, so the actual number, I don't have that number, of you know, but it's a small number relatively. Um, another challenge we have is um, that money is you know is sometimes in the wrong hands mm. yeah so we have um, people who are doing developments and can use money to get their way and that's a huge challenge also for the increased blockage of our drainages exactly. you know buying land that has even with our poor regulations we still have um, lands that have been mapped out for drainage for parks See? and all of that and people are able to use money to buy those plots of land and cause these problems. Mm -hmm. So you have places where the density is supposed to be a certain number, but the density is high. We don't have the infrastructure to, to, to um, um, take care, uh, mm -hmm. you know, support that. So in, in this axis, for example, where the water table is so high, you know, and um, we, have to, we have to have um, sewage and all of that. We don't have proper system to treat the sewage, you know. So sewage is flowing into the drainage, sewage is flowing everywhere. And that's, that's a huge challenge, you know. So as to the number of architects, you know, in, the, you know, in our environment, we, we, you know, we have to do more to make sure that we get more people qualified. But I think the bigger issue is that the people who are qualified need to be, you know, to, to be doing more, you know, in, in terms of getting solutions for our problems. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have qualified architects, but I don't think we are thinking enough. And there's this perception yeah. about um, accessing qualified architects where a lot of Nigerians, especially those who want to actually build where they get, they say they are very expensive. So rather than you meeting a qualified architect, you just look for one person where they say, in just study one diploma for inside the uh, urban planning, and regional oh, planning, yeah. Yeah. just bring and come to come fix your house, and then later you go to cry. Is this really true? Is it very expensive to access qualified architects? Well, um, the cost of design, yeah, design okay. across across um, the you know the professions, uh, architecture and engineering, is is a, a factor of the cost of the construction. You know, so saying it's expensive is relative. Mm. You know, so if you are building something of 200 million naira, say, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to spend 200,000 naira on the architect, there's a bit of a problem there, yeah. you know. So it's, it's, it's related. And people, they're greedy like yes. that. Yeah. They don't want to spend a lot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, it's related to the cost of the construction. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, so um, let's come back to you, architect um, Tayo Baba, uh, Babalaki. Now, looking at um, the association where you were once president of, tell us what will be the objective of this association and um, within the vision so far, so good, and what we're going to do as we speak. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Association of Consulting Architects of Nigeria was formed in 2004, and so we're about 15 years old. And um, we've had various um, presidents uh, that has been there. The whole essence of the association is an association of architects, consulting architects. We don't register people. We register consulting firms mm. that are specifically practicing architecture and that such, and they have the highest number, I must say, of very, uh, the high, highest number of structured buildings in Nigeria today, the association, because they are, they are all developed by ar practicing architects. Exactly. And the firms are registered, not mm. even, it's not my name that is registered, not the individuals. So, and it's really different from the Nigerian Institute of Architects that registers individual. And even the qualification for it is that you must have been three years minimum in practice mm. before your firm must have been minimum of three years in practice before they can join the association. And any building done by anybody in Akan, Nigeria has never experienced it's one of the best buildings you can ever have in Nigeria, That's if not internationally. Enough. So, and um, uh, so many of our projects uh, over. That's and, uh, really good to know. And yeah. I, now, I know soon I get a symposium coming soon. Tell us yes. more about the symposium. Let me speak with architect Ikaite. Yes, um, our symposium will take place on the 30th and the 31st of October. That's uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And the theme of our symposium is uh, future trends in the architecture, engineering. That's and tomorrow. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, future ch trends in architecture, engineering, and construction industry because, mm. you know, we are all one, you know, the construction yeah. industry and everything we do, you know, is affected by, you know, the people we collaborate with. All know. right. Now, um, that, that theme where you just talk, future trends, why you decide to use such a theme? May I ask? Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Um, as you are very aware now, I mean, as we are aware now, we are in 2019. Mm. We should be looking at for what is happening, going to happen, what is currently happening, and what's going to happen in another 30 or 40 years. How is our work and our projects and even the construction industry supposed to be like? I mean, one of the themes and uh, lectures coming up is the future of work. How does we work as architects, as construction engineers, as uh, contractors, as builders? Um, one of the things you must know in that Nigeria, unfortunately, today, our progress has not been as fast yeah. as the developed world. Uh, a 30 floor building now in Nigeria is, maybe you can count one or two, all right? But for now, the future is going much, much higher than that in looking at the construction of the buildings. And all. So those are the things we want to look at. And we have concepts of looking at even how you think out, thinking out of box. I mean, not conventional thing, even conventional thinking, how we are going to have to look at the various engineering um, um, themes that support the current trends in the future. So that's, we're trying thinking out of box and looking at what the future would um, bring for us. We're even looking at collaboration in future trends in collaboration because we do have collaborations of our international uh, consultants uh, as well. And I actually like that because you see a lot of people going to Dubai now to look at some of the architectural structures there right. and because they're very attractive. But for mm. here, for Nigeria, we have just few that you can even say, okay, let me go and look at it. Right. Most of the buildings that we get, they are almost similar. Yeah. Most yeah. of them. So I actually, I actually like um, um, this particular um, theme. Any action point on ground? Because now while we talk about the future trends, we need to also talk about the action points where architects for Nigeria need to start to take, apart from collaboration. Yeah. One of the things is for us to look at the ways how we're going to be developing buildings and how buildings will work mm -hmm. in the future and the kinds of um, technology that you require to be able to move, yeah. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we'll be looking at and there are seminars and papers that are going to be presented okay. and even we have a b2b business whereby some of our sponsors are going to meet the top architects in nigeria oh, nice. and um, be able to talk to them and see how they can help them in their in their advancements of new technology into the old um, world so those are things that we'll be we'll be looking at speaking of investors one who they expect for the for this particular symposium okay thank you very much <coughs>
we, we, I think a Yes, answer, right? okay, so we're, we're expecting um, uh, Kansai Plascon, um, the paint manufacturers. Um, we're expecting C CAPL. Um, we're expecting, um, I think, Dulux Paints as well. Um, I think well, in yeah. architects, we're expecting yeah. people in the construction industry. Industry. Mm -hmm. Majority of the builders are going to be there. Engineers. In engineering, you have the electrical, mechanical, mm -hmm. and the structural engineer. They're going to be there. We're expecting the um, architects, of course. I mean, they, they form the, they're the leader of the construction industries. Where we're even expecting students from Unilag and Yabatech and in all that. In that line of study. Yes, and then even government officials that are in uh, the housing and commission of housing and some other people that are going to be there. So what it's about a, people like me? I'm yeah, not an architect, but can I come? Oh, yes, yeah. please, you're free. Oh, it's so open. anybody, it's open for anybody? Yes, yeah. oh, it's open for nice. everybody. It's open for, it's open for nice. everybody. Even students that are wanting to be study uh, architecture, study engineering, okay, study so they construction, can they can come. It's quite open. It's yes, diverse. So please tell us again the date and the venue where you go up and with the time as well. Yeah, um, 30th and 31st of October, 2019, Wednesday, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, starting at 9 a.m. each of those uh, two days. It's holding at the Grand Ballroom of Eco Hotel and Suites. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you, so you much, very so much. much, Architect um, Ekaite. Um, so you come inside. She's now the secretary of the Architect Association of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we get Architect Tayo Babalakin. In now the past president of the Architect Association of Nigeria, the Vice President, African Union of Architects, and the Chairman Organizing Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice so the you. events again are tomorrow, so yes. you have to be there. Yeah. Are you online? Do you have any online presence? We, if yes. person want to actually go to get more information? Yes. Um, yeah. www.acannigeria.com. That's A-C-A-N-I-G-E-R-I-A.com. Okay. .com. .com. Yes. You can even register online. Oh. There is a registration online as well. So they well. can register on the on, website? Yes, yes, on the website. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for joining me. Wish thank you. you. Very best. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.